The NFL draft process is enigmatic, narrative-dominated, and even downright ruthless to some prospects, which is unfortunately the case for former Ohio State quarterback Justin Fields. The meteoric rise of former BYU quarterback Zach Wilson, combined with baseless claims about character issues, have caused Fields' draft stock to plummet. In a matter of months, he's gone from the consensus number two quarterback in the draft to possibly being the fourth or even fifth quarterback taken off the board. And like all prospects, Fields is by no means perfect, but there's a lot to like about his game. His arm talent is absolutely off the charts. He has the accuracy to throw with touch and the strength to hit any spot on the field, whether he has a clean platform or not. With many quarterbacks, we see a steep drop off in velocity and ball placement when they're forced to throw without setting their feet, but Fields is not one of them. His accuracy while throwing on the run is as good as it gets, which is an important trait in NFL quarterbacks, especially considering the rise in popularity of the wide zone offense that relies heavily on bootlegs. Fields has everything you can ask for in terms of pure talent. He's got a cannon of an arm, he makes off-platform throws look easy, and he's as accurate as they come, including when he's throwing deep. When throwing 20 or more yards downfield, in 2020, Fields completed nearly 60% of his passes, averaged over 22 yards per attempt, and an insane 28% of those passes resulted in touchdowns. There's no question as to whether or not Fields has rare arm talent, but as of recently, some have questioned the mental side of his game, labeling him as a one-read QB, which I find to be complete nonsense. Just watch this play from his game against Nebraska. Ohio State called an old air raid concept called Y-Cross, which requires a multi-read progression from the QB. The first read is a go route from the number one receiver at the bottom of your screen, which Fields would throw if that receiver is isolated against single coverage and wins his matchup. The second read is the tight end in the flat, and if he's covered, the quarterback looks to the other tight end on a deep cross. If the deep safety brackets the cross, the quarterback moves on to his fourth read, which is a deep post from the number one receiver at the top of your screen. Nebraska is in cover six, which tells the defenders on one side of the formation to play cover four, while the other side plays cover two. Each defender in a modern cover six defense has a specific specific responsibility. The outside cornerback at the bottom of your screen jams the strong side number one, then sits in the flat. The free safety behind him drops into a deep half like he would in cover two. The Sam and Will linebackers each match the number two receivers unless those receivers break within five yards, in which case the Will will drop into a hook zone over the middle while the Sam would sink with the number one and keep his eyes in the flat. The Mike drops into a hook zone over the middle and matches any crossing route coming from either side of the formation. And the strong safety brackets the strong side number two vertically or buzzes over the middle. So when Fields sees the boundary side cornerback jam the number one and sit in a flat zone, he knows that both his first and second reads are covered. So he moves to his third read, which is the deep cross from the strong side tight end. This isn't an option either because the Mike linebacker matches the deep cross and the Will is in a position to make a play on the ball if he tries to make the throw. So that brings Fields to his fourth read, the deep post from the number one at the top of the screen. Because the strong safety buzzes over the middle, there's no deep safety help over the top, which allows Fields to throw an absolute rocket deep down the middle into the end zone. This play is a beautiful example of what Fields brings to the table as a prospect. Not only did he make a 45-yard dart look effortless, he displayed his ability to recognize the defensive coverage and progress through his reads. This throw against Nebraska wasn't the only example of Fields properly going through his progressions either. He did it again in Week 10 against Rutgers when Ohio State ran another variation of Y-Cross, only this time the crossing route is run by a receiver rather than a tight end. On the boundary side of the formation, there's a smash concept where the number one runs a hitch and the number two runs a corner. On the other side, the number one runs a dig and the number two is running the cross. Fields is again progressing from left to right and I want you to watch how he manipulates the Sam linebacker in order to make space for his receiver running the cross. He first looks to the corner route to his left, but the boundary side corner sinks with the corner route as an overhang, which takes the smash concept away. At this point, he knows he has to progress to the other side of the concept because he needs 22 yards for the first down, but the Sam linebacker is in a position to make a play on the ball if he throws to the crosser. So before he progresses, Fields gives a subtle pump fake to the flat. The Sam hesitates in reaction, which creates just enough space for him to fit the ball into Garrett Wilson for a 20 yard gain to set up fourth and short. The mental side of Fields' game is a lot more advanced than I think people realize. He's demonstrated proficiency in multi-read progressions, eye manipulation, understanding of defensive coverages, and even blitz recognition. Take a look at this play from that same game against Rutgers. 
pre-snap Fields motions his running back out to the slot, and he's followed by a linebacker which indicates man coverage. In response, Ohio State called a mesh concept with a built-in pick from the tight end, which is designed to get the running back open underneath. As the play clock winds down, Fields sees the field side safety creep up to cap the slot corner lined up over the number two, which tells him that a blitz from that corner is likely. The protection is sliding away from that side of the field, and Fields has no running back in the backfield to pick up the blitz, so he knows that the blitzing corner will come in unblocked. He recognized the blitz pre-snap and was able to prepare for it, making it much easier for him to make the unblocked rusher miss post-snap. He then rolled out and hit Demario McCall underneath for a huge gain. Fields' performance against the Blitz in college was good, but being able to recognize Blitz's pre-snap and production against the Blitz does not necessarily equal production under pressure, which is where Fields struggles most. Among himself, Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, and Trevor Lawrence, while under pressure, Fields ranked last in yards per attempt, touchdown percentage, interception percentage, passer rating, and was third of the four in completion percentage. All of the traits that make me love Justin Fields as a prospect start to go away when he's under pressure, and that's especially concerning considering his average average time to throw of 3.11 seconds, which would have been the second longest among starters in the NFL last year behind only Lamar Jackson. Ohio State's Week 12 matchup with Indiana was arguably Fields' worst game of the 2020 season, and one of the main causes of his struggles in that game was Indiana's constant pressure. Take this play as an example. Indiana played a lot of cover two in this game, and here they showed a double high safety shell, which hints at cover two. So Ohio State called mirrored smash concepts designed to attack the soft spot between the outside corner covering the flat and the deep half safety. Post snap, Indiana rolls into a cover two with a six man blitz, and the safety covering the deep half on the top of your screen initially rotates toward the middle of the field, while the outside cornerback on that same side sits in the flat. This creates a giant hole down the sideline, providing more than enough separation for Fields to hit his receiver in stride for a touchdown, but because of the pressure, he took too long to let go of the ball and threw it away. Another problematic tendency that Fields has is when he's dealing with pressure, he often checks off open reads and scrambles impulsively. His speed is an extremely valuable trait, but it's only valuable if he knows how and when to use it. Here's an example from Week 1 against Nebraska. Pre-snap, the defense showed a single high safety shell, which hints at cover three. So Ohio State called a cover three beating dagger concept to the boundary side of the formation. The divide route from the number two is designed to stretch the deep safety vertically, while the deep dig from the number one gets into the space vacated by that deep safety over the middle. Post-snap, Nebraska does show cover three, but the will linebacker drops deep to cover up the middle of the field. As soon as Fields feels pressure, he decides to scramble, when what he should have done is step up and high-low that will linebacker. If the will continued to drop, Fields could have hit the drag route underneath, and if the will jumped up to take the drag, Fields could have hit the dig route over the middle for an even bigger gain, but instead he scrambled up the middle for just three yards. Now, my biggest concern about Fields' future is the team that picks him. His problematic performance under pressure can be fixed, but that will require high-level offensive line play that can support his deep passing tendencies. The fact that Fields likes to hold onto the ball for a long time amplifies his issues with pressure, and those issues will be amplified even more if he gets thrown into an offense without an established offensive line. His play style isn't a perfect fit for Kyle Shanahan's offense in San Francisco, but they have the high-quality offensive line play that I believe Fields would really benefit from early in his career. If San Francisco does pull the trigger on Fields, at number three overall, I think he has a legitimate chance to become the best quarterback in this class. But if the Niners decide to go the Mac Jones or Trey Lance route and Fields falls to a team like Denver or Philadelphia, the low quality offensive line play could do irreversible damage to his development. A solid supporting cast early in his career would do wonders for Fields' future and would help him reach the sky high potential that makes him such a great NFL prospect. That's going to do it for today's video, but before you go, I have a quick announcement. As I'm sure some of you guys know, I can rarely generate revenue on my videos because of copyright claims, so if you'd like to support the growth of my channel, click the link at the top of the description and visit my newly launched Patreon. All it takes is a dollar a month, and donating will give you access to exclusive posts. Useful information on the X's and O's side of football is not always easy to find, so once a week I'll post an article or video on my Patreon that enhanced my understanding of the game when I first started studying film. And in addition to helping me grow and gaining access to exclusive posts, the first 25 people who donate will be entered into a $50 Amazon gift card giveaway. I know a lot of people are dealing with unfortunate financial situations right now, so please only donate if you're sure you can. As for my next video, I'm not quite sure what I'll be talking about, but I'm open to suggestions. So if there's a topic you'd like covered, let me know in the comments. But that's all I've got for now, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.